Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning to our morning worship service. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching on Facebook or if you're listening on GoToMeeting, we're very thankful that you're able to worship with us this morning. I'd like to remind all of our members here that are here, if you are on, if your phone automatically goes to our Wi-Fi, if you'd please turn that off so that the broadcast will go smoother and then silence your phones please this morning we have a lot of things working against us with our weather and with the COVID but yet we've entered into phase two phase two is pretty much like phase one there's not a whole lot of different except that we can have more people here which is a really great thing and so we're glad that all of you that are here are here this morning. Our first song this morning is number 732 for those of you that have books. It's We Praise Thee, O God. Before we sing that song, we're going to have a prayer and then we'll get started. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the many blessings that you've given us. Father, we, we are so blessed. We have so many things that we have going for us in this life. Especially the most important thing is that we are your children. That we know that through following your word and becoming your children that we have the ability to have all of our sins forgiven. And if we're faithful, we know that we'll have a home in heaven with you forever. When there's turmoil in this world and those that are not acting as they should, there's, there's good people in many, many places, and there's also evil people. We pray that you would help those that are doing what is wrong, that they would stop. We pray that you'd help those that are striving to do what is right, that they would rise above those that are doing evil. Father, help us to realize that no matter where we are, there is good and evil, and that we want to be the good. Father, with the blessings that we received, help us to realize that we are to be the shining light in this world. Help us not to fall into any of the temptations that Satan has put out there, any of the temptations that would bring us down, any of the temptations that would help us to uh, make us think things that are evil. Help us always to rely on the fact that you are our God and that you have blessed us in so many ways, especially by giving us Jesus. And then from the beginning of the time, as you created this world, you had a plan for, for us. We pray that we'd follow that plan and the pattern that you've given us in your word, that we'd follow your scriptures, that as we are doing this morning, we'd come together to assemble, to worship you. And we pray this morning, Father, that we worship you in spirit and in truth, that we search, search the scriptures this morning to, to make sure what is being said is, is right. Help us to to put on the armor of faith and, and the shield that we need to fight all of the things that are in this world. Help us to realize that we're not to be a part of this world as far as the things of this world, but yet as we live here, we're to be the example as your children, as your ambassadors, as we follow your will and not the will of man. Father, thank us, thank you for, for all the, the blessings you've given us. Uh, sometimes when our health or those that we love is gone, it makes us sad, but help us to realize that you have blessed us and blessed us with the health that we do have. Help us to realize that as we face any temptations in this world, help us always to remember all the things that you have done for us that are good and help us to strive to be good as well. Father, as we praise you this morning, we want you to know how much we love you. We want you to know that you are in our hearts and that we think all the things of this world that distract us, that we'd remove them from our heads. Help us to stay focused on your will and your word as we worship you this morning. 
Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We praise thee, O God. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of my love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the spirit of life who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the God of all grace, who has bought us and sought us and guided our ways. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Our next song is number 990, 990 in the book. This is, You Are the Song That I Sing. You are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the mighty God, you are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the song that you gave to me, you are the song that I sing. Number 843 in the psalm books, 843 as the deer panteth for the water. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and thy law to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and thy law to worship thee. You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and thy law to worship thee. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my 
my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and thy law to worship thee. Our next song is number 841 in the song book, Sing and Be Happy, 841. If the skies above you are gray and you are feeling so blue, if your cares and burdens seem gray all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend, trust in his promises grand. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Off we felt trouble and tired, sick and sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will Keep your soul, let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Off we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust him each day, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Using your song books, number 955. That's 955. Lord, listen to your children praying. We're going to have a prayer in just a moment. Our scripture reading this morning is by our brother Mike Conrad. And our brother Alan Gorman will lead us in prayer. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Good morning. Today's reading, or this morning's reading, we take from the book of Acts, chapter 24, verses 1 through 9. 24, 1 through 9, book of Acts. Now after five days, Ananias, the high priest, came down with the elders and a certain orator named Tertullus. They gave evidence to the governor, or these gave evidence to the governor against Paul. And when he was called upon, Tertullus began his accusation, saying, Seeing that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity, it is being brought to this nation by your foresight. We accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Nevertheless, not to be tedious to you any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us. For we have found this man a plague, a creator of dissension among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and we seized him, and wanted to judge him according to our law. But the commander Lysias came by, and with great violence took him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come to you. By examining him, we, uh, by examining him yourself, you may ascertain all the things of which we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, maintaining that these things were so.
Uh, bow with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, so much for this time you've given us to come and worship you and praise your name and learn more about your word. And be this as we go through the, all the troubles of the world and be this as we face the storm and uh, the virus and all the many things that we face so far this year. And forgive us for all the times that we failed you and forgive us for, uh, for not always looking towards you. And Lord, we pray that we can be servants of you and uh, love you in every way possible, Lord, and serve you in every way possible. Forgive us... Uh, for uh, our lack of faith at times, Lord, and be with us as we go uh, throughout the rest of this week, Lord, and have us to be servants and examples to you, Lord. And be with us as we go throughout the service, and we pray that the service is done in a manner pleasing to you, and that it is, uh, that uh, everything's done according to your word, Lord, and done in spirit and truth, Lord. Forgive us for when we fail you, and in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The next song is number 138 in the song books, 138. This is Father Alone. Tempted and tired, we're off made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long while there are about us never molested though in the wrong father along will know all about it father along will understand why cheer up my brother live in the sun shine we'll understand it all oh, by and by when death has come and taken our loved ones it leaves our home so lonely and drear then do we wonder why others prosper living so wicked year after year well father alone will know all about it father alone will understand why cheer up my brother live in the sunshine we'll understand it all by and by faithful till death said our loving master a few more days to labor and wait tolls of the road will then sing as nothing as we sweep through the beautiful gate the father alone will know all about him father alone will understand why cheer up my brother live in the sunshine we'll understand it all oh, by and by when we see jesus coming in glory when he comes from his home in the sky then we shall meet him in that bright mansion we'll understand it oh by and by father alone will know all about it father alone will understand why cheer up my brother live 
living the sunshine will understand it all by and by for you those at home using songbooks you want to mark in your songbook our song of invitation after the lesson is number 380 380 just as I am At this time, our song before the lesson is going to be Restore My Soul, number 971. 971. Restore My Soul. Restore my spirit, Lord, I need restored. My heart is weary, please help me, dear Lord. I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Revive the fire, Lord, deepen my soul. Stir my desire to work in your fold. Light in my heart, dear God, yours will grow cold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Renew my courage, Lord, it needs restore. My cup is empty, refill it, dear Lord. Replace all doubts and fears with faith so bold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Good morning. Welcome everyone to our Sunday morning worship service, the Hickory Knoll Church of Christ. We're thankful who are, for those who are here with us in the auditorium, and we're thankful for all of those who are joining and worshiping with us together this morning, as we've been doing for the past several weeks uh, remotely uh, from home. We look forward to the day where everyone can uh, get back into the, the auditorium safely and and uh, we've, uh, as been mentioned in the opening prayer and in the prayer just a few moments ago, we, we have a lot of things going on in this world. The, the virus and the racism and riots and, and uh, now this tropical storm. But I don't know about you, but I don't really watch the meteorologist on TV. I still follow Bob Breck on his Facebook page. I don't know if you do that still, but Bob Breck has Facebook page, and in my mind, whatever Bob Breck says is, is going to be right. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. That's just my best wishes. But he didn't even bring his plants inside. He just brought them closer to his house. He didn't even bring them inside, and, and he thinks that possibly we'll uh, not have too much water. But I say all of that with a smile and sincerely hoping that we each and all stay safe and and we might have a little wind, we may have a little water, but uh, it's nothing we haven't gone through before, but uh, by all means, uh, stay safe and, and stay dry as well. Our message this morning is titled, The Desire of the Humble. And I invite you, invite you to go with me as we open up this morning to Psalm 10. Psalm 10 in your, of course, Old Testament. And as you're, you're turning there, just again wanting to let each of you know how much you are loved, how much you are cared for, and how much you are an absolutely essential part of the work of the congregation here at Hickory Knoll. And we're thankful for all of you that have been living the life of faith the last couple of months. We're thankful for your patience and your willingness to even think out of the box of how to live the Christian life as far as love and service to others. We're making memories, but hopefully we're also keeping the faith as well. But as the psalmist says in Psalm 10, verse number one, life is not always going to go well. In fact, the psalmist says, Psalm 10, verse one, why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? 
I think we would all agree that we are living currently in, in times of trouble. Now, I don't suppose there's ever been a moment in time where people have lived that have, they have said, well, there is no trouble going on in the world, but uh, in the moment, it of course feels as if troublesome times are not only near, but they have uh, arrived. And these troubling times that go on in the world, it sometimes results in us wondering, God, where are you? Why are you hiding? God, where are you in the midst of the storm? God, where are you in the midst of the virus? God, where are you in the, in the midst of prejudice and brutality? Lord, where are you during all of these troubling times? Now, we do realize as we're going to focus our time this morning primarily in Psalm 10, but, but Psalm 10 is essentially a continuation of Psalm 9. And we're not going to go through all of the Psalm 9, but I, I encourage you to certainly kind of glance back at it. Specifically, the psalmist in Psalm 9 verses 9 and 10, he does acknowledge that the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. It, it kind of seems like the psalmist is speaking out of, that David's speaking out of both sides of his mouth, right? In, in Psalm 9, he says, Lord, you are our refuge, and, and Lord, we will seek you knowing that you have not forsaken us. And, and isn't it a great feeling, a great thought to have that sense of God's presence in your life and, and that security that comes as a result of being a Christian. We draw near to the Lord and he's near to us and we we see him working in the world and we know that he's in control of our lives and, and we just know that, that God cares for us, he loves us and and we feel completely connected to him. He is our refuge. We know he has not forsaken us. But the very same fellow that wrote Psalm 9, 9 and 10 is also reflecting a little while later in this chapter 10, verse number 1. And it kind of reminds us that the Psalms captures the experience of what it means to be human. It, it captures our rational thoughts and it also captures our subjective feelings as well. Some have, one fellow, one person described that that we have the Psalms are man's word of God that is now God's word back to man. David is speaking to the Lord what's on his mind, but he's also speaking to the Lord what's in his heart. And we know that with our thoughts and feelings, they can tend to go all over the place at times. And one thought and one feeling, we feel as if God will never forsake us and he is our refuge. And then on the other side, God, where are you? Why are you hiding in the times and in the days of trouble? David captures for us the human dilemma that men and women of faith have experienced for a long time. God, we want to know that you are there, but where are you? I don't see you. I don't feel you in my life. I, I don't even know, Lord, what is going on and why you are allowing all of this to happen in our lives. Well, as we continue on in Psalm 10, we're going to notice the, the sin of pride. And uh, we mentioned a moment ago that the sermon title this morning is The Desire of the Humble. Well, and you know the exact opposite uh, of humility is pride. Is, is arrogance. And I'm going to, for your consideration as we go through the next uh, few verses or so, point out three observations that pride is connected to each beginning with the letter P. Number one this morning, pride is connected to persecution of the poor. I I'm in Psalm 10 verses 2 through 5. The wicked in his pride, persecutes the poor. 
Let them be caught in the plots which they have devised. For the wicked boasts of his heart's desire. He blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them. A life of pride is going to ruin our faith. A life of pride is going to keep us from understanding how the Lord is working in our lives and in this world. And pride is connected to, of course, ourselves and what we want. And, and it's connected to how we, how we persecute others and others that may even be more vulnerable than us. Uh, the poor in scripture is captured in a, a number of different ways, uh, including the orphans and widows. That's a, a recurring theme throughout the scriptures. Those are the, the vulnerable. Those were in the first century. Those were they were at risk and and uh, they needed uh, they needed protection. They needed provision. And and there were oftentimes people who would uh, persecute those. But uh, if you look in the prophets, uh, Amos, the prophet of Amos uh, comes to mind. Go back and and read that prophet, uh, that book of the Bible and be reminded of how much the Lord condemns his people for diverting justice from the poor, from not being able to look out for those who are at risk, those who are vulnerable. Now, there's a couple of uh, thoughts here in verses two through five connected to persecuting the poor. I, I, I see the word greediness. When our life is filled with greed, we'll do whatever it takes at whatever cost to, to get more, to move ahead. If we are motivated by greed, it doesn't matter how we get it. We just want to get it. It doesn't matter who we hurt along the way. It doesn't matter if we stab them in the back or betray them or manipulate them. It doesn't matter getting more and more, including persecuting the poor. I also see the idea of prospering in verse number five. Now, prosperity in and of itself is not a bad thing. In fact, 3 John verse number two the Bible talks about how we are to prosper in all things just as our soul prospers. But again, if our prosperity is funneled or facilitated by this greediness and this desire to take advantage of other people, then it's going to create a difficult situation for us in our lives with the Lord. Uh, just a moment ago, we sang a, a popular song, a common song, farther uh, along. In verse number two, I was noticing as we were singing, connects very much to this idea about prosperity, about greediness, about wickedness. The, the second verse of that song says, when death has come and taken our loved ones, it leaves our home so lonely and drear. Then do we wonder why others prosper living so wicked year after year? Not to say that you're living a wicked life if you've experienced prosperity. However, many folks are pursuing money. They're pursuing prosperity as they are motivated by greed and by taking advantage of of others and the psalmist here talks about how pride in relation to persecuting the poor and taking advantage of others is going to obviously not be pleasing to God. Uh, point number two this morning as we look at verses six and seven, pride and connected to persecuting the poor, but also second to profanity as well. He, verse six, Psalm 10, verse six, he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. Who is he, the man or woman that is filled with pride in their lives? I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. 
and his mouth is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. The Bible has a lot to say about our tongues, our, the way that we use our mouths. Hopefully we will use our mouths to praise the Lord and to bless others. But as James, specifically in James chapter 3, talks about how the tongue can be an unruly evil. And if we don't tame the tongue, then we are going to have some problems with others and with the Lord in our lives. I'm also thinking about Ephesians 4 and how we are to use our tongues and use our words to, to the Bible says in Ephesians 4, to speak truth and love and also to let no corrupt communication come out of your mouths. But when we are filled with pride, we have profanity in our words and that profanity in our words is a reflection of the profanity in our hearts. Now, I realize that some people slip up and occasionally say something they don't really mean or, or it just came out the wrong way. And, and hopefully we'll give each other the, the benefit of the doubt, a little grace and mercy from time to time. But the person filled with pride, his heart and his words are always focused on profanity. And you may be wondering, well, what's the connection between pride and profanity? Or is there a, a connection? Well, the, the psalmist is pointing out this connection, and, and I've tried to think about it a little bit. And, and maybe a person who is filled with pride, maybe it's the idea that they have this deep seated belief. That, ever, that they should always get what they want, or maybe a deep-seated belief that life should always go their way. And so when life doesn't go their way, or when they don't get what they want, there's a sense of frustration and anger and madness, and that may be communicated in some choice language, some profanity, some cursing, as, uh, well, we want to check our pride and to even look at the things we're saying and the thoughts that we are saying. Look, uh, look at our tongue, uh, uh, over the tongue, under the tongue, what's coming out, what's staying in. What are those thoughts? What are those words that are coming to mind? What are those words that you are speaking? And hopefully we'll come to see that the more and more pride we have in our life, the more and more profanity we have, but the opposite is true as well as we humble ourselves we'll be able to edify others we'll get rid of that corrupt communication we'll be able to tame the tongue we'll be able to praise the lord with our words as those words are a true reflection of what's going on in our hearts uh, third this morning pride in relation to number one persecuting the poor number two to profanity and number three, pride in relation to plotting evil. We noticed a moment ago, the second part of verse number two, let them be caught in the plot which they have devised. Picking up in verse number eight, he sits, who's he? The fellow, the lady, the woman who's filled with pride. He sits in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places he murders the innocent. His eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in the den. He lies in wait to catch the poor. He catches the poor when he draws him into his net. So he crouches, he lies low, that the helpless may fall by his strength. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see it. Pride makes us do some crazy things. Pride results in us plotting evil. Now, again, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. And, and sometimes we do or say things that are just out of character. And we beg for forgiveness. And, and we want others to just help us to move on from it. And, and let's forgive, forget, 
and, and move on. But there are some truly evil people in this world who are intentionally plotting evil. Did you notice the phrase in verses 8 through 11, he lies in wait? Or you may have noticed the word secretly. This is a calculated plan to do evil on others. It's premeditated. It, it, it's planned. It's schemed. It's, it's well thought out. And it is the, the most, it, it's, it's terrible to think of that all of this evil plotting goes back to a prideful heart. Pride does come, destruction comes before the fall. Pride is connected to destruction. Pride is connected to all things sinful. It is one of, the, the, one of those uh, seven things that, that God hates. There's nothing good about it. But there is good in the Lord. And uh, the bad news this morning is what we've noticed the first 11 verses. But the good news starts in verse number 12. Are you with me? Psalm 10, verse number 12. Arise, O Lord. O God, lift up your hand. Do not forget the humble. Why do the wicked renounce God? He has said in his heart, you will not require an account, but you have seen it. For you observe trouble and grief to repay it by your hands. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the helper of the father, the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his land. Lord, and here's the title of our message this morning. Lord, verse 17, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their hearts. You will cause your ear to hear, to do justice, to the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. Jesus is our king. The, the Lord is our, the king of our lives, and we we'll, may have a sermon or two in the near future about this kingship of Jesus. He's Lord of lords. He is king of kings and this this king the lord verse 16 the lord is king forever and ever think about all of the trouble sometimes going on in our lives past present and i'm sure future as well and understand that in the same way yesterday and in the same way tomorrow that today the lord is king forever and ever and when we come to understand that the lord is king we're going to be more likely to swallow our pride and to live the humble life from time to time i, I like to search for acapella songs on uh, on youtube and there's of course the the famous group called acapella and they have some awesome songs but there's a there's a, a, a youtube page called humble is the way d-a way not t-h-e humble is the way and there is some great songs uh, and they're all by members of the church and a fellow by the name of chris turner he sings the song mansion robe and crown and at the same time he has Sing Hallelujah going, and it's uh, singing in, in groups there, and it, it's absolutely beautiful. Terry Mays uh, sings a song, I'm glad I know you, and I'm glad you know me. We praise the Lord. We're one big family, and one that I've been listening to quite a bit uh, a fellow by the name of Jason Walker sings a song, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Humble is the way. Humble, 
humble is the way in our lives. It is the path to Christ. And, and when we come to understand that the Lord is king, you know what that means? That I am not. That this world is in the hands of the Lord and his will will be done. And that doesn't mean that I'm always going to have my will be done. And that's the essence of the Christian life. Lord, not my will, but thine. Do you know that when we say not my will, that is us swallowing our pride and living a humble life. Lord, I don't have to always get what I want. But Lord, it's not what I want. It's what you will. Because I'm not in charge of this world. I don't have to always have it all figured out. I don't have to always get my way. But Lord, I'm going to swallow my pride. And I'm going to live the humble life knowing that you are king forever and ever. That's good news this morning in this bad news world. That the Lord is king forever and ever. Humble is the way. And don't miss, don't miss the connection here. As far as verse 17 and 18. The desire of the humble. And you may say, well, Eric, well, what is the desire of of the humble. Well, I guess you could certainly say that the desire of the humble is that the Lord is, is king forever and ever, and that's certainly true. But don't forget number verse number 18. The desire of the humble, that's you and me this morning. That's the church. That's the brothers and sisters in Christ living together in worship and in unity. Worship to the Lord, unity with each other the desire of the humble verse 18 is for the lord to do justice let me say that again and it's coming right out of our text this morning the desire of the humble is for the lord to do justice now when we're living a life of pride and all we're thinking about is ourselves. We might say what David said in Psalm 10, verse number one. Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble, Lord? But when we live a life of humility, our desire is for the Lord to do justice. As we close this morning, I, I want to go and finish in Romans chapter number 12 and I won't have much comment except to to read the scripture and I, it's a familiar passage to you there's a lot of things going on in our world but this passage of scripture in Romans 12 it, it captures this idea of the Lord's sovereignty it captures the idea of what humility as opposed to pride looks like and it captures with us this desire of the humble for the Lord to do justice. I'm going to pick up in verse number 9 of Romans 12 and go down to verse 21 and then the lesson will be yours. I know you've read this passage. I know you've heard it, but will you follow along with me as we close this morning? Romans 12, verse number 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind to one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. 
Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. In Romans 12, verse 21, the Bible says, Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Thank you for your attention this morning. At this time, we are going to offer the Lord's invitation. It is a, a time during the service in which we reflect upon our own lives, and if there are changes that need to be made, then by all means, let's make those changes. It may be the case, uh, someone here or someone not watching remotely is ready to become a Christian, putting their faith in Christ, ready to repent of their sins and confess that faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and as the Bible says, to be willing to be baptized into Christ, fully immersed into water to have their sins forgiven. Or it may be the case this morning that you have been a Christian, but you have fallen away, and now you're ready to, to live that life of humility, to live that life of serving the Lord, knowing that he is our king forever and ever. This morning, if you need to respond to the Lord's invitation, please let us know. And at this time, we're going to sing our invitation song. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul. Supper, our song for the Lord's Supper is 10,000 Angels. If you're using the song book, it's number 621. 621. 10,000 Angels. We're going to sing all four verses and then sing the chorus at the end. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. 
They spat upon the Savior, so pure and free from sin. They said, crucify him, he's to blame. Upon his precious head, they placed a crown of thorns. They laughed and said, behold the king. They struck him and they cursed him and mocked his holy name. All alone he suffered everything. When they nailed him to the cross, his mother stood nearby. He said, woman, behold thy son. He cried, I thirst for water, but they gave him none to drink. Then the sinful work of man was done. To the howling mob he yielded, he did not for mercy cry. The cross of shame he took alone. And when he cried, it's finished, he gave himself to die. Salvation's wondrous plan was done. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone. The passage that has been selected to read before the Lord's Supper this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 21 through 31. Matthew 27, 21 through, 30, 20, 21 through 31. The governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Paul said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They said to him, Let him be crucified. Then the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, and when, he had, and when they had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. When the soldiers of the governors took Jesus into the praetorium, they gathered the whole garrison around him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail! King of the Jews. Then they spat upon him, took the reed and struck him on the head. And then they mocked him. They took the road off him and put on his own clothes and led him away to be crucified. A quick story about Jesus' death is what he went through for us. He was mocked, he was ridiculed, he was beaten. He did that for us, and as we partake of the memorial service today, it's an opportunity to let our hearts and minds go back to remember what Jesus went through for our lives and for our sins. Let's give thanks for this loaf, which is to us a reminder of that body, the body that was mocked, the body that was beaten, crowns put upon his head, reed being pounded on his head, driving the thorns into his head. Let's think of this body that was pierced for us and what Jesus went through because of his love for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his willingness to come down to this earth, to live as man, to be tempted as always, and as all points as we were, yet remain sinless. 
We thank you for a dedication to you, a dedication to us, for the, being the author and perfecter of our faith. Ask that you would be with us now as we take of this loaf, that we will remember the price that was paid for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we have an opportunity to take the fruit of the vine, which to us is a precious reminder that blood that flowed on Calvary. We know that life is in the blood, and Jesus gave his blood that we might have eternal life. And let's always keep these things in mind and be with us as we take this representation of his blood. Heavenly Father, continue to be with us as we take this fruit of the vine now that we might re remember that blood that flowed on Calvary, the blood that cleanses us and washes us from all your sins, from our sins, that we might be holy and pure in your sight. Be with us that we will take this in a manner according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. You'll notice at the rear of our auditorium, we have a big yellow box for our contributions. If you would make sure and put your contribution, I know some have already put theirs in, but if you don't, if just a reminder, put it in. If you are mailing it to us, we sure appreciate that. Or also uh, sending it through your bank, that's also a great way to make your contribution. I want to let you know of some announcements that we received. This morning and some that uh, that you may already know, we want you to be praying about. This morning we received uh, information that uh, Mandy Lovett, who's uh, one of our first responders, had, had to go to the emergency room. I didn't think that was anything unusual, except that she wasn't going there to work. She was going there because she has uh, been diagnosed with some kidney stones. So we're praying that those pass very quickly and also to keep keep the pain down. Yeah, no, those are very painful. So let's pray for Mandy. Also, uh, Lauren Laguna is going to be having her appointment this week to come up uh, with the treatments and decisions that are going to be made. Uh, she still has her, her vision is still uh, impaired and pray that that could be restored very quickly. Also, I want you to know we're praying for, for Christy Justice's father who had surgery uh, uh, coming up very soon. And uh, yet he needed to go to the hospital, uh, uh, right, I guess yesterday. And so he's, he's uh, being taken care of there. So we want to pray for him. His name is Paul Chrysler. Also, we were praying for uh, Ashley Brandon's grandmother, Sue Baker. Uh, she had a stroke last weekend and uh, it was very bad and she had been very, uh, she'd been unresponsive. So we need to pray for that family and pray for her. Also, Christy has asked us to pray for uh, the family of Logan Hoskins. And this is one of Chris's friends, and, and Logan's mom is having uh, serious problems. Her organs are failing, and uh, we want to pray for her. They were told she had very little time. We pray for her family and their love and concern for her. Kay Davis had asked us to pray for her friend Donna Renard. Uh, she had been diagnosed with a large aneurysm in the brain, and she's going to be going under uh, testing for surgery. Pray that uh, everything on that is successful. Also want you to know that uh, with all of the unrest that has been taking place in our country, sometimes we don't realize uh, if there's anyone we know that may be in harm's way. You know, we pray for our first responders uh, every Sunday, and uh, we received word this morning that um, Julianna Malone, well, I think she's married now, but uh, this is uh, Jane Bustamante's granddaughter, uh, Juliana. Uh, she's in our military forces and she was deployed 
to help uh, put down some of the unrest that was going on. So um, we pray for her safety and all those that uh, are, are dealing with this. And uh, remember, pray for our country and pray for peace, pay for those to, to all these things to settle down and that people would realize that we're all one, we're all together. You know, the Bible tells us there is no uh, slave or free. There's no uh, man, female, we're all one in Christ. And it doesn't matter uh, who you are, or where you came from. Uh, God has given us all the ability to be forgiven of our sins and to live with him, be his child. And pray that more people would realize that, uh, that they have a higher calling than the calling that they're following. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll pray for those in a minute. Uh, we'll have a closing song and prayer. Our closing song is number 171. God bless you, go with God. 171. This is my daily prayer. God bless you, go with God. Hold fast His mighty hand throughout the day. His grace your heart sustain. His power relieve your pain. Your prayer be not in vain as you travel the day. In spite of all the lies that some may hurt, Christ is the only hope of all the world. God bless you. Go with God through all eternity. My prayer will always be may you go with God in spite of all the lies that some may hurt. Christ is the only hope of all. you go with God through all eternity my prayer will always be may you go with God may you go with God let's pray together our dear Holy Father, we thank you for letting us be here this morning to worship you. We pray that we might always put you first in our lives. Help us to reflect on every decision that we make based on, based on you and what you would have us to do. Father, we know that sometimes we fall short. Sometimes we uh, fail to do what is right. Sometimes we fail to, to do anything when we really should. Father, we pray that we would look at people through your eyes, that we would look and, and see that everyone is, is, could be your child. We pray that you'd help us always to look at those that we may be lost, that we might be able to help them to be saved. Father, we pray that you would help us uh, always to put you first. And especially, Father, we're thankful that we can be here and worship you. We pray that we might always have this freedom. We pray that you'd be with our country, pray that you'd be with our leaders, pray that you'd be with all those that uh, you bring us peace, bring everyone together and realize that as citizens of this country that we can work together. And also the fact that as children, as your children, that we can be uh, working in another realm, knowing that you are God and that we are representing you and knowing that we should strive always to do what is right. Father, we pray that you would be with our loved ones here who need your help, especially those who are sick. Father, we pray that you'd be with those who have, uh, have the virus right now. Pray that you'd bless them. Pray that you'd heal them. Pray that we're thankful that the, the virus is uh, mutating, that it's getting weaker. We pray that very soon it'd be completely gone. And Father, we pray that you would be with, with uh, our loved ones who have uh, illnesses this time. We pray for all of our 
our elderly folks that have issues with their health. We pray that you would strengthen them, pray that you would help them, that they might, during this time, get stronger. And Father, we pray that we can be together very soon. Father, we pray that you'd be with, with Mandy now that she's in the hospital and she's always uh, taking care of others. We pray that you would take care of her. Pray, for, pray that you'd help her to know that even though she may be in pain, that, that you're with her, that you'll strengthen her, that you'll give her the courage and pray that you'll help her uh, to pass these uh, stones very, very quickly. And Father, we pray that you would be with, with Christy's father, uh, Paul, as he's uh, in the hospital. Pray that you'd bless him. Pray that they'd find uh, the problems that he has, that he might be able to, to be re restored to his health. And Father, we pray that you'd be with uh, Ashley's grandmother, Sue Baker, and her family, be with uh, the family of Logan Hoskins, be with um, Kay Davis's friend, Donna Riard. We pray that you'd be with all those that are on our, our prayer list. We pray that you'd bless and strengthen each one. We pray that each one might be restored to their health. Father, be with our, our ministers here as they're preaching the word. We pray that you'd help them to, to always follow the truth and find the strength in your word to present it to us in a way which we would understand, in a way that we would take hold of and reflect on those things and use those scriptures to, to further know more about your will for us. Father, be with all of our, our, our loved ones that are not able to be with us this morning. We pray that you protect them and keep them safe. Be with our family in all the many different places that they are. Help them to be, uh, to be well, protect them. Be with Juliana. Be with all of our men and women that are serving our country in so many different ways. Protect them. And Father, we pray that you'd be with our first responders here, uh, our police departments, our, our, our uh, firemen, and all the health care workers that have been taking care of us. We pray that you continue to bless them and be with them and keep them safe. Father, as we leave here this morning, we pray that you'd help us to always remember that you are our God and that we are so blessed to be called your children. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.